from EPAWA Weather Consulting headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania. This is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Hey, good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 6th. We're getting deeper into winter now, and we're starting to see the temperatures go from uh, where we were in January, climatological annual minimums, to start to very slowly come out of that. And we're going to see a slow and steady increase in high and low temperatures here in the month of February. So starting off with our long range outlook that we had, uh, that I put out on Friday, a lot of ups and downs here in the first half of the month. And uh, you're going to have some transient mild periods in there. One of those such periods are going to be coming this week. Okay, we're going to have that uh, coming in kind of like mid to late week. And then, you know, once you hit the weekend, then we have a cold front come through and end that and get uh, back to slightly below average. But we see a lot of ups and downs. There's another one here uh, right after the middle of the month. And then we have another uh, colder shot uh, during the fourth week of the month. And then we ha might have a little bit of a warm up here going into early March okay but again March is still going to be one of those up and down deals okay but you're at least in March your climatological average highs and low temperatures are at a higher level at that point so it's going to take a little bit more work uh, to get some snow events here in March but of course that's certainly not out of the realm of possibility we do have it near average both February and March for snowfall now we do have February as a whole near to slightly below average zero to minus two okay that's overall so if you took the full 28 days, average them together, that's what you have at the end of the month. But you will have some milder periods in there, slightly milder, nothing crazy. Uh, but then we uh, have a little bit more lean toward the slightly above average in March, uh, near to slightly above average here for the projection for March that we put in Friday's long-range outlook. Here's what we have in terms of snowfall. This is now updated for the February and March normal snowfall across the region. This is what you have typically in February in the left column. And typically in March, in the right column, you see there's a dramatic drop-off here. Except if you're in the far interior up here by Scranton Wilkesbury, it's not really much change there. Okay, so you still have uh, some some snow events uh, pretty consistently up into the Scranton Wilkesbury area, but everywhere else you're cutting totals down pretty significantly uh, across the region. Okay, here's what we have uh, so far. Now I posted this on Twitter yesterday. I got a lot of reaction. I did that on purpose. It was and I did it without a legend on purpose because it was. Um, it was done for effect, okay? It's just to give you an idea of where the snow haves and haves nots have been this year, okay? So there is a big snow hole right in here where there wasn't really too much in the way of snowfall this year. That's your snow hole. Uh, and everybody always uh, says that's around D.C. and it shifted north. That's what all, most of the comments I got about that. Um, but there is definitely a slightly below average uh, snowfall hole in the middle there that goes from south central pa up through the lehigh valley um you know even part, much of the susquehanna valley actually and and just northwest of the philadelphia region so you know these areas around it uh north south east and west of us is is primarily getting uh, all the snow and these areas uh farther southeast got uh, well above average snowfall not only for january but also year to date okay so uh, and also for an entire season, you're already above normal season snowfall here of a lot of these places in the coastal regions. And this area here in blue is between 6 and 12 inches of snow for the entire year, okay? The dark blue. Uh, this uh, color here, which is the kind of lighter yellow color, that is between 12 and 24. And then you get right down the shore here, down by Atlantic City, coastal New Jersey, and then you're in the 24 to 36 inch range. Of course, Atlantic City is at 33.2 inches of snow and I, at least they were i didn't see if they had anything from the last one i know they had a little bit of snow at the tail end uh, from that uh, rain system that we just had this week but regardless this is uh, what we have for the entire uh season through february 5th and it is what it is uh, just they hold decided to be right right in the middle i thought that was pretty interesting uh so let's like look, look ahead at our, our current enso and this is our uh la nina regions the el nino regions in the eastern equatorial eastern pacific and where we are compared to last week we are still continuing to climb out of those really cold waters there we're starting to climb toward neutral and we have not really too much change here but this has uh come up a little bit so it's still a weak la nina but very weak 
Okay, it's heading toward neutral, which we are expecting to continue to do once we get into the middle of spring. Is uh, reach uh, maybe mid to late spring, we get back to near uh, neutral temperatures in that region. Okay, so here's what it looks like from a sea surface temperature anomaly standpoint in that same region we're talking about right in here. Uh, these areas are still slightly below average in this entire region, but it is favoring again the eastern areas. This is uh, Nino. Th uh, this is Nino three. Okay, so that is why those temperatures are are coldest relative everywhere around it. But it is still overall a weak La Nina in this particular area. Uh, comparing to the 2018 analog, we have this, okay, very similar, very similar globally actually with these temperatures. This is looking at a snapshot of the sea surface temperatures on February 5th, 2018. So you can see it's still, we've been making this case all winter that it's not really, um, wasn't really a blockbuster winter kind of pattern. I know you have some opportunities here and we certainly have had those. Uh, but uh, if you look back to the numbers from 2018, okay, uh, the south and eastern areas, coastal areas did very, very well that year, uh, especially in January, okay, uh, and it wasn't until late winter where we got into any uh, any big snow events for the interior, okay, and that was actually had a, in that year we had in March, uh, March 21st actually, fittingly, right, as the change of, change of spring occurred, you had a system that dumped a pretty hefty amount of snowfall for the interior. So you can still get those. And it might not be March necessarily, but it's just going to be, you know, you can't just give up on and say that, well, the rest of the winter uh, is going to go just like it has gone so far. We're really not going to get anything left. And it's already February. You have to deal with sun angle. You're going to hear all these things coming up. Well, the sun angle's higher now. So we're not getting snow. It doesn't work like that, okay? Uh, one of the things that is going to drive this pattern in an intra-seasonal way, of course, is the Madden Julian Oscillation. Now, we've, there's been a lot of talk about uh, where we're going, going forward, and last week I made the case that we were going to be making a Phase 3 run, okay? The GFS Ensemble was showing a Phase 3 going quickly into Phase 4. We thought that was incorrect. Well, now the GFS has gone toward the European solution, where it does not progress that into Phase 4, at least not yet. I think it does get there eventually, uh, but just not for February. So February is going to be continuing the slightly below average temperature regime. And here you can see that uh, the colder temperatures are found in the Pacific Northwest, far northern U.S. to some extent, but mainly, mainly Great Lakes, Northeast, Mid-Atlantic still get into the colder than average, just slightly, but colder than average temperatures. But look at this down here. This is what the interesting thing to this is, is uh, you start getting some La Nina influences of the Southeast Ridge here. But this is far confined to the farther south of our region, Okay. So when we get into uh, solidly into phase three, which is where, where we're headed, uh, this is going to be this pattern that we're setting up with, with the southeast ridge starting to flex a little bit. When I do these storm signals, I'm not looking at models. I, I, I really don't care what the models are showing for that period. As a matter of fact, when I did this, it wasn't in range yet. Now it is. So I have a storm signal that I listed that was not Valentine's Day. Okay, I hear a lot of talk about the Valentine's Day, maybe... Super Bowl Sunday into, into Valentine's Day period of being something. There is something there. I'm just not excited about that. And the, the ensembles are not really excited about it. Some of the operational runs went a little nuts yesterday. Still have something this morning. Still have some energy in the vicinity. I think your better period for a storm signal is going to end up being between the 17th and 20th of February. And that's just because of this MJO progression. Okay. You look at things globally, the other side of the globe, what's going on there, the different things that'll, feed, that'll affect things downstream. And we made the argument that it wasn't going to be a phase four, which is a milder, slightly milder signal uh, that was probably going to be re remaining generally colder overall. You will have some transit ups and downs like I talked about, but you'll have this southeast ridge uh, influence coming back into the play, which will set up a gradient pattern. So if we get in that 17th to 20th period and we have any winter storms that do, in fact, come, come to fruition during that time frame, which I really think there will be something. It's going to be one of those gradient overrunning type deals where you have a band. It's going to depend where that boundary sets up. So this this uh, area low pressure is going to form along this boundary and kind of ride it up like this. Okay, so it's an overrunning situation. I'll get in about a closer look so you don't have to squint there. Okay, uh, we'll get into that. Uh, so first, the temperature periods that we're looking at uh, going forward. This is uh, you know, a lot of ups and downs here over the next couple weeks. So we have that milder period, mid to late week. Then we get colder again. Then you have another mild shot that's going to come in after, uh, as we head into the following week. Here's the milder shot coming in right about there. See that quick transient mild shot. Then you get more cold coming back in toward the end of the run here. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of ups and downs in this period. It's not, but it's going to be dominating. The large part of it is going to be slightly below 
excuse me, slightly below average. So you'll have the trades in mild periods for like a day or two, maybe three, and then they go right back down. That's kind of what we're dealing with uh, going forward. Here's what it is looks like graphically. And I use Lehigh Valley International Airport as a centermost point of our coverage region as an example. Uh, this red line I drew over here, there, here is what average is. Now you see it's very slightly increasing over this two-week period. You start off at 40 as the average high. By the time we get to February 22nd, the average high in Allentown is 43. So this is where we are relative to average over the, and the projections over the next two weeks. So you see most of these are below that line. There are a few periods, like mid to late week today, this week, that you have slightly above that line, but it's nothing crazy. Your mild periods aren't, it's not like you're going to 60, okay? And the same thing here, you get another period right in here that kind of spikes up a little bit, slightly above average, but that's not really notable. Compared to January, it's going to seem a lot warmer relative to January, because January we're minus 3 to minus 5 or minus 6 in some places, below average at, at the already lowest climatological uh, period of, the, of annual minimums in terms of temperatures, highs and lows. So we're already colder than average in the coldest time of year. So relative to January, it's going to feel milder, sure, sure. But I mean, what cons what it is considered average is still going to be dominating near to slightly below average. I think by the time this dust settles on February twenty eighth, so that's what it looks like graphically for the next two weeks, which takes you through February twenty second. Okay, which is, I believe, one of the President's Days right there. Okay, so temperature periods on the GFS extended. This goes out to thirty five days. This is showing. Uh, that you have the colder dominating for the most part in the very end of the run. Here, here's looking at uh, the seven-day average here going through, and until you get to the end of the month here, and you get a little bit of semblance at the very tail end here that you're going to have a little bit of a milder period coming in as we head into very late February into early March. Nothing, nothing crazy, but certainly milder than average, and the Euro weeklies are supporting this as well. So the GFS progression not taking into phase four right away is having an effect on the longer range temperatures. So if you look at March, we have near to slightly above average temperatures for the month the month as a whole. You're still going to have some ups and downs. They're going to have some cold shots, could have some perfectly timed systems coming in, bringing you snow still in, in, in uh, March. But uh, the overall theme is going to be slightly milder than average once we go into March overall. Okay. Here's the 35-day GEFS snowfall mean. This is if you averaged all 30 members of the GFS ensemble and put them together. This is what it's expecting for snowfall. Now, now forget the individual numbers here. I know it has individual numbers popping up on here on the screen. That's not the important takeaway. The important takeaway for this is you're now favoring the heaviest snows being in the interior rather than down here. This is the opposite of what we've had so far this year. You're getting more up here than you did down here. Okay, so that's the general takeaway. Uh, the amounts are going to, this is just a blended mean. So some of them might have zero. Some might have 30 inches of snow. You can't really go by um, what the numbers say, because this is blending 30 together to give you a general idea of the axis of the heaviest snow, which is going to be up in these interior regions rather than southeast. I mean, you can't get something down here. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means probability favors these areas up here. Okay, just so you understand how that works. When we use these, you're not looking at verbatim snowfall. You're just looking at the probabilities of where the best chances to see those snow, uh, snow chances are going to be uh, relative to our region. So, uh, February 14th, everybody's talking about that signal. Uh, there is something here, right there. You can see this is the European model from last night. Yesterday, this was a really wrapped up system and put a, you know, 16 to 20 inch snowfall across uh, much of our region, at least in the interior. Uh, this is backed off. The GFS uh, and the Canadian models last night have something there, very weak. It's nothing really notable. Uh, if you look at the... If you look at the ensembles for all three, none of them are, are enthused with this period. None of them. Okay. There's a few that have just some very minor snow. So there could be something there, but I wouldn't call this like a true storm signal in the sense that you have the opportunity for a bigger snowfall. I just don't see that right now. We'll continue to monitor that. Uh, but you noticed in our in the long range outlook I did, there's no mention here of that that period for winter storm signal. I have one listed here, and it's between the 17th and the 20th, which is right here. Here's that 17th to 20th range that we identified as a long range signal. And this was before any models had anything and before the ensembles were in range. So if we go to uh, go to that period, just now, now because since it is in range, and take a look at those storm signals that we have listed in that period, you have 
this, okay? This is starting the 17th through the 20th. This is an overrunning pattern here that the, that the ensembles are picking up on, which is interesting because it's now following a phase three look in the month of February in a La Nina year. So if you go to, uh, go back to that here, look at that. There's your gradient. You have a southeast ridge starting to press against that gradient, and then you have colder air further to the north, right? Well, that's what's happening here on the GFS Ensemble that I'm showing you in this uh, in this loop here. And I'll stop it right there. Okay. So in this, uh, for all intents and purposes, here's your southeast ridge. Your gradient's kind of like this. So you have southeast ridge pumping up, uh, warm air in the southeastern United States in that phase three look, but you have colder air up here, colder air pushing down to here. So the idea is you have along that gradient boundary, an area low pressure that moves along and just south of that region. And if it does that, you get overrunning snow up here in the interior of our region. Now, this is a long way away, but at least it's picking up on the signal of what a phase three should look like. And there's a lot of energy running around here during this time frame uh, that could lead to something. Okay, so it starts at the 17th and it goes all the way to the 20th. And you can see there's a lot of energy running around there for an overrunning type of event. Could this end up further south? Yes. Could it end up further north? Yes. Okay, we have to see where the southeast ridge lines up at but there still could be an overrunning event you can get some serious snowfall the event that we just had uh, that was primarily rain for most of the region until the end we started changing over to sleet freezing rain and then uh, maybe some snow at the end that was an overrunning event too it was benefiting areas much farther to the northwest of our region however but you see how much snow fell with that there was a lot of snow that fell uh, in that situation, so these overrunning events, you can have that kind of thing happen. So we're gonna we're uh, gonna continue to monitor this period with be better interest, with it, which I think is a better storm signal period that the ensembles are now picking up on between the 17th and 20th of February is our next uh, outlook for that. So uh, going into March here, I do think we go into phase four eventually. Okay, um, and again, if you go into uh, the Matt and Julian oscillation for this month, you can see. Where it goes through February 20th is still in phase three. It's kind of making hints that it wants to go towards phase four with time. Uh, and a phase four signal, this is a phase three signal right here, what it looks like. But when you're in March, a phase four signal looks like this. This is phase four in March. You can see a lot of warmth coming into these regions, which matches up with what a phase four should look like. Whoops, I just moved that. This is what a phase four should look like, okay, with that warmth building into the center of the country southeastern U.S. and starting to get us into the onto the fringe areas of that. Okay, up in northern New England here, it's a little cooler yet, but you see the colder air here in the western United States, that's here too. This is a phase four look, and this is using the Euro monthlies that just came out. Okay, this is the monthly projection for the month of March. So we're kind of like near to slightly above average in our region. Okay, the uh, most prominent warmth is going to be up in these regions here. Okay, and then here you're just kind of like near to slightly uh, above average in our area, which is exactly what this is doing. See that? Same thing. Okay, so it makes sense. It makes sense that this is doing this. And if they, we do, in fact, progress into phase four in March, we're going to have those milder risks a little more prominently than we have now. So uh, that's what we're looking. doesn't mean you can't get snow in this situation. This is going to have to be timed better. Okay, uh, temperatures are going up. Climatological average temperatures are going up. And um, you're going to have uh, you're going to have to have something a little bit better timed and track just right to coincide with any of the cold air shots. You're still going to have some ups and downs. You might have more this month in February. You're going to have more colder periods than you do the milder periods. March is probably the opposite. If more milder than you do colder, you just have to time something better with that. Uh, so we still kept the snowfall chances in the month of March, and we saw that in 2018 or leaning analog. Much of the month of March, it was, was not suitable for snow. And then all of a sudden, you had just one perfectly timed system that dumped a, a lot of snow. And it just only takes one system in order to do that. But I do think we have chances here in February yet. The better chances there are going to be in February. And we'll have those opportunities going forward. Uh, so maintaining the, the uh, 2018 as a leading analog. And we're monitoring the MJO progression in the weeks ahead, which determines how long the colder pattern maintains in February. I think it goes through the fourth week of the month. And then at the very tail end, we start to come out of it. And heading into the first week of March, we are uh, generally milder than average during that week. We're going to be watching winter threats over two different periods. I am going to watch that Valentine's Day period just in case, but I don't think it's going to do something right now. There's not a lot of support for that, but there's still some energy around for at least uh, giving us a, an idea that we have to watch this. This would actually be Super Bowl Sunday into 
Monday is what the timing is for that. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but I'm not really excited about that period. This period afterwards, though, is an overrunning precipitation pattern, gradient pattern type thing, where we can get some snow uh, north of that gradient boundary between the 17th and 20th, with all those energy pieces running around. Uh, the southeast ridge that I showed. So February is going to fe uh, feature very slightly colder overall with the transient mild shots. March favors the opposite, milder, and then some transient colder shots. Uh, and so we will turn milder uh, in March, not only because the averages are coming up, but because relative to the average, we're going to start seeing a little bit more consistency toward um, milder overall in March. But again, you'll still have some transient periods mixed in there where you have uh, so the opportunity for some snowfall yet. I'm EPA to doing meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That's this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 6th. Join us again next week, and we'll take a look at this, maybe this pattern here uh, that just got right ahead of this signal, which should be a lot, a lot clearer at that time. We'll be able to identify, maybe take it from the storm signal period to an actual storm at that point. Uh, but there's no determining that just yet. We'll just continue to follow it throughout the week. Take care.